So a new book is hoping to expose the alliance between globalists, liberals, feminists, and socialists in their attack on the nuclear family and Christian ideals. Joining us to discuss is Kimberly Ells, author of The Invincible Family, Why the Global Campaign to Crush Motherhood and Fatherhood Can't Win. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So in your book, you talk about how in the name of equality, women are actually losing their rights. Can you explain? Right. There's a huge push, and it's my experience has been at the United Nations over the past 10 years, and I've observed that there's a concerted effort to make men and women not not equal, but the same. Yes. And uh, anyone who is observing things can see that men and women are, in fact, different, and they bring different strengths to the table. And and uh, But more and more and more, we're seeing that women are being convinced that in order to be truly powerful, that they need to embrace uh, tr things that have traditionally been assigned to, to men. One of the cases I make in the book is this is simply isn't the case. Women can do a wide variety of things, and so can men. There's a great deal of overlap in those things, but women are unique in the fact that they can be mothers. And so often women are told that that's a powerless position, a worthless position. Right. Um, I take the opposite view. I take the view that that is in fact the most important and most powerful position that there is. Well, and then uh, you, you also talk about in the book that the family is being targeted by both socialists and feminists, which tend to be one and the same. But, um, what uh, what actions are both groups taking uh, to s try and destroy the family? Right. Well, if you go back to the early writings of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, which I do in the book, you see that their agenda was overtly anti-family. In fact, they say in the Communist Manifesto that they want to abolish the family. And one of the ways that they, that specifically Engels says that that must be done, is that all women must be brought into the public work workforce, kind of whether they want to or not. And that's the way that society will be the most prosperous. And I have no problem with women being in the workforce. I myself do other things other than mothering, although I have five children. But um, when it becomes the desired default that we pass over the teaching of our children to people other than parents, then then we're we're in trouble. And and that's what I've seen at the global level that there are. Um, very many instruments and programs in place and moving with huge money behind them to, um, they don't openly say to destroy the family, but that works to unhinge the family uh, in, in so many ways. They certainly do, and, and our family sees that all the time, and it's so unfortunate. They try to kind of pervert science and uh, promote their unscientific data. Can you explain further? Yeah, I mean, so many instances of this. One one troubling thing that has happened recently um, is that the the Biden administration has partnered with the World Bank, which is the United is in the United Nations umbrella of organizations, and they recently just ro rolled out last month an initiative to join with the World Bank in providing universal daycare for everyone. Now, some people may need or want that, but again, if we're making uh, state rearing of children the default. I think any benefits that we see are going to be greatly outweighed by the hurt to children and therefore to society. So, I mean, what do you think the ultimate goal is in dissolving the nuclear family? That can't be productive but once you dissolve the family like that to stay cohesive because you're not going to and then kids are going to uh, go astray and get into crime and violence and, and all of those things. So I don't mm -hmm. understand. The, the why they think this is a good thing, I guess. Right. Well, you asked what the ultimate goal is. And again, it goes back to the early Marxism of the goal of abolishing the family. But why do they need to do that, I think, is what you're getting at. And yeah. it's because the family is the most powerful organization in the world. And because mothers and fathers, their children belong to them. And children can, parents can teach their children whatever they want. And so if you are a person or an organization that has global ideals and wants to enact uh, uh, collectivism on any level, the family is your enemy. You have to break down the family in order to usurp the power that it inherently has over the children of the world, because the children of the world are going to grow up to be the adults of the world. And so as long as mothers and fathers in all their diverse viewpoints are teaching the children of wor the world, it's going to be very difficult to commandeer, uh, you know, the world at large into a socialist or collectivist uh, regime or, or uh, organization. So who has the left elected as their new ally in the United Nations? Can you explain? Yes. Well, I can tell you the thing that brought me into this arena to begin with 10 years ago is that I discovered a document online called Exclaim, and it was published by International Planned Parenthood Federation. 
and it was all about children's sexual rights and that disturbed me as a mom and uh, so i got looking into that and I, i decided okay this looks like it's real and therefore i'm going to fight it for the rest of my life so international planned parenthood federation i've since learned has a huge seat at the world table and especially at the united nations the united nations regularly partners with ippf to um, enact programs and and specifically to proliferate the idea that children inherently have sexual rights and what that means in their words is that they have the right to privacy to seek sexual pleasure to access sexual information and sexual services without children without the consent of their parents and so that's the thing that thrust me in, into this uh, arena and and it, it's much bigger actually than i than i ever imagined and that kind of we see all these troubling things coming down in our schools and what i want what i have found out is that it's coming from a global source which appears to me to be anchored at the united nations in partnership with one of the entities is international planned parenthood federation any time that we talk about the sexualization of children you know that there's pedophilia and all these other issues going on in the world, human trafficking, and they're focusing Mm -hmm. on our children. Why can't they just be innocent little beings learning about the history of our country and not being indoctrinated with such filth? Right. Well, Aristotle originally said, you know, the fate of nations depends upon the education of little children. That's why. That's why they focus on little children and sexualizing them. Because if you teach a little child in its youth, that it has a human right to seek sexual activity and and sexual pleasure outside of marriage, outside of any responsibility, you have set that child's feet on a certain path. And that path is going to be destructive to him or her personally, but it's also going to be destructive of the family unit, which is gonna give you, if you're seeking global power, a great leg up in that battle. If you commandeer the minds of young people, you have won the war. There's many things that bring happiness, but really, when we look closely, the family is, brings us the greatest joy. Our, our careers may be fulfilling, but ultimately raising our children is the greatest asset, the greatest benefit, the greatest joy. It certainly is. Well, thank you so much, Kimberly Ells, for being on the show. We appreciate your time and your candor on uh, what is going on with the left and the sickness against children. Thanks, Kimberly. Thank you.